Wow, not bad. Silo. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of the Murphy Street Podcast. My name is Murphy, I'll be your host. Joining me this evening, my man CeeLo. Tell everybody what's up. How's it going? Now the rules of Murphy Street are simple and always the same. Shoes and slippers at the door, come inside, and let's talk story. Brother, what have you been up to? Caught up with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. I didn't watch it on the release day. Okay, uh, shame on you. I know. A big change from WandaVision. Right, yeah, um, in I a, agree. In a, in a good way, not that WandaVision was bad, because I actually right. really enjoyed WandaVision, but we it was a good uh, change of pace. Kind of felt more like a, a Mar like a true Marvel yes. experience. And throughout the week, well, one, I had two birthdays, so happy birthday, sweets. My oldest son turned 24. Uh, on the 16th and on St. Patrick's Day, the very next day on the 17th, Maluhia turned four. So happy birthday, Maluhia, happy birthday, sweets. Um, so I was busy with that, but in the meantime, we also started to get our Murphy Street Easter egg hunt off the ground. Yep. And we actually launched it today. Today was the first day of the Easter egg hunt. The fan favorite, Star Flores, who I'm pretty sure is the fan favorite to collect probably the most of the Easter eggs, by, but by all means, you guys, make sure everybody tries. We did get, I think, a total of four entries today, because we will have one grand golden egg at the end of the entire thing on the 14th mm -hmm. day. Today we went live for the very first time. The drop happened at about, I want to say 10.45 or so. Mm -hmm. And literally five minutes after I put it up, uh, I got the, the like, I got the comments, and then I got the story post in which I sent her back the location. Obviously first, follow mm -hmm. the Murphy, yes, follow follow Murphy Street 808, right? Like the post yeah. and then comment and tag somebody and then share it to the story? Share it to the story, yes. Today was the first drop. It was the Stormtrooper egg and tomorrow will be the second drop. We can announce the egg the day before, right? Yeah, why not? The Darth Vader. I think tomorrow's prize is the Transformer, what is it, Headway? I'd like to get Star to come on and talk to us just so that we can let everybody know what that experience is like. Yeah. How you doing, Star? Hi. Hi. Hi, Star. And I know that you said that you were waiting all week for this, and thank you so much for participating. How was that experience? Was it a tough thing to do for our, for this? Am I <laughs> Imagine being the guy putting the egg in there. So you got today's one, which was the Grogu and Razor Crest. And you know what? Why not? We can tease um, the next day's drop. I believe the next day drop is the Rob. It's the Teen Titans Robin, the new McFarlane one. Well, also, you heard that, you guys. Make sure your post notifications for Murphy Street 808 are on. If not. You will lose the star immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, love. Okay, we're going to get back to this episode, but thank you for coming on. I appreciate your feedback. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, take care, love. Super excited. Uh, we have 14 days of just a bunch of stuff. Once again, the Murphy Street Easter egg hunt for 2021 is on. We are so excited. Go make sure that your notifications are all set and ready to ding because um, posts will go up around 10 o'clock. But all right, you guys, so now that we've talked about our Easter egg hunt, myself having worked at Disneyland, I have such a deep connection to the park. I will say that I was really, really happy to hear that they will be opening the gates again. April 30th, Disneyland is set to reopen. A couple things though. So one, because they're in the red tier, their, their uh, theme parks are only allowed to invite 15% capacity. So regular capacity for Disneyland is roughly around 50,000. Disney California Adventure Park, roughly around 80,000. So again, they'll be able to operate and invite at least 15% uh, of that total number, um, which will be just under 20,000. Here's the catch. Only California residents are invited initially. I think it makes sense. I mean, you're gonna cater to your, your local market. You have your annual pass holders, you have the people who have been supporting for a while, you're going to take care of your own first. I'm glad you brought up annual pass holders because let's talk about more caveats that we have to this new opening. <laughs> first of all, no APs, also yeah. known as annual, annual pass, pass holders. holders. <laughs> no fast passes. Which I'm kind of surprised. What they're doing is they're opening up the fast pass queue mm. and creating a bigger switchback so that uh, you can have yeah. or incorporate that social distancing. I was just thinking like, the less people you have to wait in line, yeah. the better. No, I, and I agree. This is the like idealistic stage. Like ideally, yeah. this is how we want it to work. And I think they know they're gonna have to test a bunch of different right, which is again methods and procedures. We're anticipating that by the time April 30th comes around, they will actually have moved from red tier to orange tier, which mm -hmm. would then allow for 25% yeah. occupancy. But I think just to test things out, I think they're gonna keep it tempered yeah. at the 20,000 or 15%. So uh, no parades, no fireworks. No meet and greets. 
Now, what I did not know, or what I didn't ask about, it didn't mention park hoppers. I'm assuming not. Right, okay. If they want to, I mean, if you're trying to maximize your attendance. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise that one person counts for two. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you Even know what? downtown Disney is packed right now. Yeah, well, last September when I went, uh, downtown Disney was, was actually pretty, I think we just went on a good day, but by the time we left, the switchback was almost out to Disneyland Drive, or Disney Way, I should say. Now the food, food is actually a big part of the Disney experience. A lot of people don't realize that until you're there and you're hungry. Um, they're not sure if indoor dining will be available at that time, but places with outdoor will be. First of all, the Plaza Inn will be open. <laughs> if you guys have not had fried chicken at Disneyland, it is the greatest experience of all, and the Plaza Inn makes amazing fried chicken. Um, Riverbell Terrace is also going to be open, I'm assuming the Jolly Holiday, which again, if you guys make it into the park and it's still morning time and you want a good breakfast sandwich, Jolly Holiday has a fantastic bacon, egg, and cheese croissant. Oh, good yeah, yeah, sorry, you know. Oh, and also right across there from Coke Corner, they have really good macaroni and cheese hot dogs. Yes. Yeah. Stage shows such as Frozen at the uh, Live at the Hyperion and Mickey and the Magical Map are assumed to be gone forever. I, I find that forever. really, yeah, I find that really hard to believe, mainly because of the money that they poured into the Frozen show. But as of right now, we don't know when the anticipated return could potentially be. <laughs> okay, so stage shows, right? Frozen Live at the Hyperion is in an enclosed area. Mickey and a Magical Map is actually outside. It's an open amphitheater. So what does that mean for Phantasmic? Yeah. That's next as well. And for the time being, I would assume oh, so. Phantasmic, so great. And if theaters are slowly opening, you know, there's the vaccine. Yeah. Like eventually yeah. you'll see. Now, there are things that they said are added magic. For instance, because this is such a popular ride, Snow White's Enchanted Wish which is now a reimagining of Snow White's scary adventure, which I never understood why you would make that the Snow White ride, by the way. <laughs> Have you ridden that ride? Did you ride that ride? The, the original Snow White ride? The one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't it so weird? It is. That, that whole little fantasy land. Land area? Area is a the little rides warped, are weird, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Fantastic Mr. Toad. Toad, yeah. 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 <laughs> they said that it's a reimagining of Snow White's scary adventure, adventure with dazzling new scenes. I'm assuming that just means they probably like redid the fiber optics mm -hmm. like they did on Peter Pan including a dancing figure of Snow White joining the dwarfs in their cottage while the smell of baked apple pie floods the air. That sounds horrifying. I don't know what to tell you. And then so also, the haunted mansion is also supposed to be plussed up with magic. Wow. There was no specifics. I know, I know, I know. I actually kind of dig that one. Right, I was going to say, I, I really dig that one. I would like to go at some point because it's been a while. Right. Now. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's great that they're opening up again. I think for cast members, it's great. It's uh, disappointing that it's taken this long. I don't know that when we talked about it closing, that I anticipated it being over a year before it I'm sure we started. talked about it too. We, and we were, we were no, probably we like, yeah, it. six months. All right, let's move on. So okay, this past Thursday was the premiere of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Jensilo, what did you think of the episode? I thought it was cool. Um, it, it's interesting because they, they made a show around two characters that I would say are not the largest Marvel Draw. characters. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, even when they announced it, I was like, oh, really? Yeah. You know, and it, but then when you think back, you're just like, oh, okay, I can see them now starting to like massage it into our, yeah. what we were comfortable with. They were slowly yeah. getting uh -huh. little they were bigger creating pieces. that connection, yeah. Seems really well done. Absolutely. I really enjoyed it. I also thought it was kind of funny. They replaced uh, Falcon's Falcon with a drone yes. on his back. Red Wing? No. Red Wing? Red yeah, Hulk? So, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Let me ask you, did you anticipate Sam Wilson giving back the Captain America shield. I did. Really? Hey, did they show him giving it back or was it no, just No, but they, they just made, yeah. Yeah, his, his I did see that. I have to admit, I was sidelined because one, it seemed like a lot for him to take it in the first place. I felt like it was sacrilege that he gave it back. You know, like I almost felt like it was a broken promise at that point. You know, CeeLo and I were talking earlier and I, and I did have to say that it seemed much more Michael Bay. Yeah. Uh, much more Michael Bay production. focused. Yeah, and maybe it's just because we've been desensitized from WandaVision since it was more cerebral. Yeah. Um, more story building, which was fine. Uh, but it was just, it was nice to get kind of back into the swing of things with yeah, Marvel. Yeah, this would just straight up like yeah. started off with action. Any of the new characters that you saw kind of bring any excitement or you're curious about? The new Captain America. Okay, I'm very interested in the girlfriend. Uh, uh, not the girlfriend, but the girl, the chick from the bar. Excuse yeah. me. The woman from the bar. And I am also interested in John Walker. And he's being played by Wyatt Russell. I'll be honest. I have no idea. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be also honest. When I first saw him come on, I was like, "Is that Homelander <laughs> uh, from the Boys?" 
But this guy looks horrible in the mask. Like, we're looking at a picture of him right now. CeeLo, what's your thoughts on this guy? Uh, he, he looks kind of chumpy. It's not like he was completely unknown. There is, there has been another gentleman that has filled the shoes of Captain America in the past, right? He's not a, a bad dude, but he's a little more aggressive and violent. Right, so um, in, in other words, Steve Rogers was a Boy Scout. This guy, well, is literally a Marine. Yeah, like this guy, I, I would kind of compare it if I had to, like, to the Punisher. Right, okay. Right, yes. you know, like, he thinks he's doing good, but the way he does it, eh, it could be questionable. Yeah. It was very apparent that um, uh, he had a side piece on his hip. You know, and I did not see that. He did say that it was very apparent, and I feel like an arse for not seeing it, but yes, yeah. you did and see And if you that. know, like, Captain America, at least through the MCU, um, I think it was the, the very first, um, the first Avenger, sure. where he did use a pistol, but from then... Yeah. He kind of evolved into just needing to use his hand to hand and combat and, and, and shield. Hand -hand. Right, yeah. And for this guy to kind of start, start off, off with, with the, the piece with the on the pistol hip. on his on his yeah. hip, it already gives you a very different feel for, for who this guy is gotcha. and the methods that he might have. I agree. Oh, by the way, this article that I got was from ScreenRant.com. They say that he was a more violent counterpart to Steve Rogers, and also that he was a Captain America version of Captain America that's not afraid to get his hands hit. Two different people all together, so it'll be interesting to see how this character develops. It is now time for our What's On My Table. You ready? <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm gonna try that again. So this is the Marvel Legends set. I'm gonna shout, I'm gonna shout my man, um, Warren Morton out because uh, he was the one that actually hooked me up with these a while ago. This is the uh, X-Men Wolverine. As, uh, as my wife knows, I love Wolverine. Um, mainly because he was like one of my first ever like big time, I was a huge Wolverine fan. If I was also an X-Men fan, who would be another dope villain that I would probably know? Magneto. Have you ever seen Magneto in white? No, I have not. Me neither, until today. <laughs> Nonetheless, that is what we have for what's on my table. That'll wrap it up for this episode of the Murphy Street Podcast. We want to remind you to make sure to check our post every single day for the next 14 days, at least until Easter, so that you guys can stay on top of all of our Easter egg hunt drops. We want to encourage you once again to always like and subscribe to us as a YouTube channel, which is the Murphy Street Productions. There you will get all of our things. Also, don't forget, as Star Flora said, to hit the notification bell because there... You'll be able to get all the notifications as soon as we put out new videos. You will not miss out on a thing. Do not forget to follow us on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and almost every other platform that you can get your podcast from. We want to make sure to thank our sponsors, Garen Chun, for helping us out with our logo again. As always, our partner sponsor from the Heart Hawaii. At the end of the entire thing, the culmination of it uh, would actually be Easter Day. We may or may not necessarily be at from the Heart Hawaii for that, but if you are collecting for anything, make sure that you're checking out From the Heart Hawaii for all of your collector needs, whether you are a card collector, Pokemon collector, Funko collector for sure. Other than that, where can they find you at, CT96707 on IG. Yep, and you can follow me at Murphy Street 808 that is M-U-R-P-H-Y-S-T-R-E-E-T-808. And so, until we see you guys next time, don't forget your slippers. Aloha. Aloha.